Hello again, everybody. I'm Larry Hamilton. Welcome to my YouTube painting channel. Thank you for watching. Um, we're going to do a nice demonstration today of a, an oil painting that I picked up a photograph from on the Facebook uh, page called Photos for Artists. I've referred to that many times on this channel, so uh, it's, cer it's certainly a good reference for a lot of photos. Um, and uh, this photo comes to us from a photographer named Deb Brown, and uh, I really like the looks of it. Um, I want to talk to you in a second about uh, uh, the photograph itself and what I did to it to sort of change it slightly for this painting. And uh, so I want to go over to my computer. We're going to paint on 11 by 14 canvas. You can see here behind me, um, <clears throat> I have uh, a little bit of acrylic base coat on it instead of my gray gesso, which I usually use. Um, sort of made a mixture of some orange and burnt uh, sienna to give us a little red reddish uh, background in it so that may help some of those will come through as we paint so anyway uh, hold on I'll be right back I'm going to go over to my computer and I'll catch up with you there hold on okay here I am at my computer and uh, <clears throat> excuse my voice I've been having uh, a lot of congestion it seems like this uh, this uh, time in Florida has gone through a lot of uh, uh, pollen season and it seemed to have really gotten me this year so I <laughs> my voice is kind of raspy and I've been coughing and sneezing so uh, I'll try to hold it down if I can um, let me show you the photograph that we started with here this is uh, Deb Brown's photo I cropped it to 11 by 14 uh, uh, size so that it would fit on our 11 by 14 canvas um, and uh, the aspect ratio, I really should say I cropped it to uh, 1 to 1.27, which is that aspect ratio. Um, if you notice this photo, it's really a beautiful photo. Um, the, uh, I guess I, if I subtitled this, I'd say uh, water is not blue. Um, there's uh, hardly any blue in this water. There's a little bit of a, a violet in it, so I'll use that. Um, and there's not a lot of depth. I mean, there is some depth, but I'm going to try to give it a little more depth. So. When you see the value map and see my sketch, you'll see that uh, I actually cut out some of those trees in the background and gave myself a little more sky there that I can put some uh, depth in. <clears throat> and I'm going to change the foreground a little bit. Here's the uh, grid that I always uh, prepare for you. It's a 4 by 5 which fits nicely on the 1 by 1.27 uh, format aspect ratio on my uh, uh, canvas. And so um, that's the beginning photo. Um, and I went through and did a value map. And you can see the value map. I have a lot of light areas in the background here. So I'm going to try to lighten that sky up a little bit more than it is, uh, sort of bring it forward a little bit with some, uh, uh, some of the violet colors. I'm not going to use any blue in this painting at all. And then uh, we'll gradually get it darker as we come forward till we get to the water. And then that's going to be uh, sort of a brownish color. You can see brownish and yellow. Um, it's going to be interesting. One other thing I did that I um, don't, it doesn't show in this photo is I picked up another photograph that's got some uh, logs in the foreground. And I've taken a couple of those logs out of this photograph and I've stuck them in the front of this, in the foreground of my uh, sketch. So uh, you'll see the sketch here when I show you the sketch. It has um, some areas in the front where I picked up a couple of those logs. We'll still have some logs in the foreground, so <clears throat> we'll have a little better definition in the foreground, a little good definition in the middle ground, and I'm adding some open areas in the background to this photograph so that we can have a, a little more depth. And then, uh, I, as usual, I've transposed that onto my uh, canvas in white uh, Sorrel transfer paper. It's the white. Uh, version, so I use that to get the sketch on there, and that's what you see when I uh, go back to my um, easel. So uh, I think that's all I wanted to show you. I wanted to uh, uh, let you understand how I got the, the the painting I'm going to create and why I did it the way I did it. It's not going to match the photo exactly, but I'm going to try to improve on that photo hopefully a little bit. So let's go back over to the easel now, and uh, we'll get going. <coughs> Okay, what you see here is my uh, palette, and um, I uh, have my paint brushes here. This is my few little Bob Ross brushes. I have my one-inch blender. I have the fan brush. I have my 
number five knife and I have my uh, rigger or script liner that's called um, I'll use those but I also have a handful of other brushes over here that I uh, use some time to time from Trakel Trakel.com I, I really like some of their brushes they have these synthetic um, uh, brushes that I really like they re really work well with oils um, so anyway I really don't have to tell you the, the paint colors here you see I've actually have them written down here titanium no blues midnight black Van Dyke brown dark sienna alizarin crimson sap green cad yellow yellow ochre Indian yellow no bright red so I've taken three I have my violet over here taken three of the uh, typical colors off the palette and uh, so if I want blue I'm going to get it from the violet or from the midnight black if I need some red I'm going to get it from the uh, alizarin crimson but this particular painting doesn't have hardly any blue in it and uh, not much red so um, I wanted to re remind you again I told you before I think about this paper I have on here this is my glass palette sitting here but on top of it I have this uh, it's called gray matters paper palette and it's it's covered so that the paints uh, move around on it like they do on glass but when I'm done with it instead of having to scrape it off of my glass uh, palette underneath here I just wad it up and throw it away so if you're interested in that these are these are called the uh, turn it this way gray matters paper palette um, and I used that when I was teaching these classes I would give everybody one of these sheets and it had the paints on it that's how we would lay our paints out just like that so I would have them on my palette that way and uh, everybody that was in the class would have uh, the same same layout so they could see what I was taking and where I was taking it from so um, that's the brushes I also have my uh, a little bit of liquid white here and a little bit of uh, uh, my uh, uh, this Windsor Windsor Newton liquid which liquid as you may know helps the paint dry a little faster liquid white as I'm sure you know makes the painting dry slower so uh, I'll use a little bit of that I'm not going to cover the entire canvas with white um, as Bob Ross would typically do but because uh, I want to preserve my uh, want to preserve my sketch on here so there's my easel I've got the sketch all lined up I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to put my palette on here and uh, see if I can get this aligned so that we can see everything and move it over just a little got my palette down in the lower right corner and uh, I think I'm ready to go now um, I want to make, remind you if you have any questions or comments uh, uh, put the uh, I put them on the chat window here and uh, I'll try to read them as I go along and uh, this will uh, I can answer questions if possible and uh, maybe that'll help out a little bit so let's get going I'm going to uh, put a little bit of my liquid white back here in the background I think I'm going to use instead of my big brush for that I'm going to use one of these uh, Trakel brushes because I got a lot smaller areas I want to fill in here with some of that liquid white I don't want it to cover the whole, whole canvas as uh, you know and um, so let's put this in uh, back here so these are the areas I'm going to lighten up a little bit um, and I want to be able to flow that paint over this uh, easily Linda you said my voice is disappearing how is it now is it better now I was uh, I may have had a uh, um, when I was at the computer I may have had part of that where I didn't have my voice camera on when I was talking it may have disappeared there for a few seconds I don't know uh, I hope it's okay now my uh, voice has been really raspy and bothersome in the last uh, few months actually okay so I have a interesting abstract shape here for the sky um, and I don't have the sky in yet so let's uh, see what we can put in that sky I'm gonna pick up some of my violet and my titanium white here and uh, see if we can put in a nice little sky back there it's going to have some some black in it or some uh, some of my uh, midnight black and white and some of my uh, violet in there so that it's, it's going to give this is uh, adding atmospheric perspective which you know probably is uh, giving us some depth and uh, so it's going to give us a little bit a different sky than shows in this painting uh, but or in the photograph rather I should say okay my voice is fine now well good I'm uh, <laughs> hopefully I'll uh, be able to keep it 
keep it fine throughout this painting, I don't know. Putting some air holes here in the uh, areas where I've got trees. Um, the other thing I didn't tell you um, is that I'm actually uh, going to change the, what's on the left side of this photograph from um, a, uh, a bunch of trees over here. I'm going to put a, a little rock, uh, sort of a rock cliff-like area here that uh, it's going to give us something a little different in the, on the left side so it doesn't match exactly what's on the right side. Um, a good compositional tip for you is that anytime you have a photograph, you want to paint it, anytime you're painting anything, if you take something and divide it down the middle, if what's on the left side looks like what's on the out right side, it's not the best composition. You want to have some differentiation. You want to have something different on the left than you have on the right. You don't want to just duplicate it like a cookie cutter on the, cut it in half. Um, so think about that when you're putting together a composition. And if you have a photograph like this that you may think is very beautiful, if you want to keep it the way the photo is and put the uh, make it symmetric on both sides, that's up to you. You're the artist. Uh, but from what I read and what I've learned from other artists is that a better composition is to um, make it different on each side, make it asymmetric. And that goes for all your shapes as well. Um, the, you know, you want your shapes, you don't want shapes to look like geometric shapes. I think I've mentioned that before. Um, we don't want to have circles and squares and triangles and that sort of stuff. Um, and uh, we try to make as many shapes abstract as we can. If you can look at this sketch closely, you'll see that you don't see any circles, you don't see any squares, you don't see any um, triangles. I've tried to make these rocks in the water uh, at the bottom of this waterfall here as abstract as possible. Um, so that's just um, a compositional tip that uh, I'd like to hand off to you guys and let you um, think about that. Okay, that's good enough for the sky right there. That's it. Um, clean out my brush a little bit and uh, Let's get going on some of these trees in the background. Um, I'm going to do these trees. Uh, the ones on the right are going to be a lot more yellow than the ones on the left. So um, I'm going to start on the trees on the, and the trees on the left. I'm going to pick up my midnight black and some of my sap green here. And we're going to start in the back. I'm using the same brush. I cleaned it out. Um, this is a, a number. Uh, 12 uh, filbert brush and uh, I'm gonna get more paint in than that and uh, I want to uh, let some of the sky show through I'm gonna let some of the background color show through as well um, and so we'll start down these filbert brushes give you nice rounded tops like deciduous trees would would have um, so that's kind of the reason I like them, uh, as opposed to the fan brush that uh, I know you've seen Bob Ross and other painters use to make pine trees. Um, these will, uh, you can make pine trees with these kind of brushes, um, and I have many times, but um, I think they, uh, they're better for these type of trees that have curved tops and rounded tops and that sort of thing. So I'm putting in a dark um, background here with just some, takes a little bit to cover up this, this underpainting, which I figured I was gonna have to deal with. Um, I'm gonna put in some places for vertical brush strokes for trunks, tree trunks and that sort of thing. Um, So we're getting the dark, darkest darks in here. And the light is kind of coming from the left, but it's shaded from the left as well. So um, I want to make sure we don't have uh, uh, confuse, we don't want to confuse the viewer with uh, where the sun's coming from, because it's going to come across, it's going to hit the trees over on this right side. They're going to be really light, brightly lit up. 
um, with uh, bright yellow. So that's the reason I have my cad yellow on my palette and uh, that's what we're going to use that for. I'm just using pretty much straight sap green and midnight black here um, and uh, I'm going to add now just a little bit of my cad yellow to this and start lightening up the green. I want to get a mid-tone um, before I think I've mentioned to you that if you can get three values in your in any object um, you will have shown a lot of three-dimensionality. So I'm putting I put in the darkest value first. I'm putting in the mid value now for these trees on the left. And I'm going to come back and put a few highlights on them, uh, especially on the edges out here where they uh, overlap and you can see them in the sky. I'll put some bright, uh, I'll put more brighter uh, edges on them out here because the sun will be hitting out on this side out here. Um, okay. I do have a uh, monitor behind me so I can kind of turn around and check to see how things look to you, hopefully. Okay. So these air holes are really great. They help add depth to your composition. Um, I want these to kind of come over like this, down. I want this to sort of go from dark mid value to light as we come across left to right. So the uh, cad yellow with the sap green is giving me that mid value right in here. And um, so I'm just kind of overlapping the sky areas right now so that we can see that. I'm going to leave these air, these air holes in here and come back and put some tree trunks through there so you can see the see the depth of the trees. Uh, maybe a little more dark in some of these areas here, maybe like right in here. Mid value, dark value, light value. And if you use dry brush, you can get some very beautiful effects from your side of your brush by just scraping them lightly. I'll put some highlights on this after a bit anyway. So um, these are coming down into here, into the rock area. Okay, that's a good start for that chunk of woods. Cover that up a little bit. Okay, and now I want to come back and put some uh, lighter green, really light green, almost yellow highlights on some of the tips out here. Uh, where they where the sun is kind of hitting them in some areas. I've just taken pretty much cad yellow, put a little bit of uh, titanium white in it to lighten it up just a little. And with the green that's on there, I can kind of put a nice light looking brush stroke. Okay, so just randomly place these so that wherever the light might be hitting, uh, put some of the high highlight values like this, and hopefully we're, we're giving the getting the message across that this is a a big bank of trees back in there that are. Uh, shading this waterfall and this water. Okay. All right. Um, let's leave it at that for now. Um, <clears throat> may touch up in there right there. All right. Um, on the other side over here, since I've got this green in my brush going, I think maybe I'm going to uh, Use a little bit different color. I'm going to gray it down just a little. If you want to gray your green down, you add some sort of red to it. So that I can pick up a different color green by just adding alizarin to sap green. And I get a grayed down green color over here. I don't know how well it's going to show up, but we'll put some over there. Uh, more sap green. I think I'm going to 
it is going to be lighter over this side, so I'm going to put some of this white over there. Add that, add some alizarin with it, and see what we get over here. So these I want to be lighter. And uh, I'm going to have some light in down in, in there. Uh, but let's see. Not too much white. Let's come back and get some more sap green. Put in there. In some areas. There's a lot of green in this painting, and uh, that's another compositional uh, um, guideline that I've read about and heard other artists talk about is that if you put too much green in your painting sometimes they're uh, they're kind of boring if you don't have the ability to make these greens really pop if you don't have the ability to give them depth and value changes uh, you're going to be with uh, having a problem with your composition so I'm just going to put a little bit of this paint down here to sort of give me a a base to paint over in a few minutes when I when I come back and light put some really light color on that. Uh, see, this is all background. I'm making this this water go all the way back into this area back here. So, this is all trees that are going to be overlapping the uh, the woods back there, and uh, so kind of fun to try to modify the uh, original photo a little bit to uh, see if we can improve it. Hopefully it'll improve it, I don't know. Pick up some ochre. I'm going to change this color some more over here on the right. Um, So we're coming down to here. This is where the tree line comes down to. A lot of sap green in this. Adding some yellow ochre to it now. I really haven't cleaned out my brush much. I'm just sort of letting these colors mix and mingle and blend on the canvas here. Um, get this all kind of filled in, covered up can still see, because I have that sketch on there, I can still see where my tree trunks need to go on that right side. And uh, so um, I'm not losing that because of those, because of the sketch. As this comes down here and there's more viney stuff on the right side, I'll put some more green over here, a little bit darker maybe. Some of this starts getting out of the light down here as well. All right, so let's just get this underpainting on here and okay, that's a nice big <laughs> underpainting. Put some few darks in there. few of my other darker values. I still want to do three values over here if I can. Uh, get some dark uh, foliage in some areas. Like that. Just a little darker value. Green. Some up here. All right, let's uh, stop on these greens for a while. All right. All right. Now, while I'm on on this on this green kick or on the tree kick, actually, I want to uh, come back and just sort of finish in some of these over here. I'm going to start putting in a few really bright light.
treetops here. Lighter up here on the tops. this together a little bit let these uh, trees sort of kind of come together because they are sort of close together here as we come into this area where the creek starts flowing back here something like that maybe there's a few more dark areas in here darker than that. Let's see, I don't want to lose track of where my baseline is, like right in here somewhere. Okay, so we're just trying to map this all in here so we know where I'm trying to keep this fairly soft, not, not a lot of hard edges back here. Um, I want it to look very almost foggy or misty uh, rather than very sharp. You know, these photographs, when you take a photo with a camera, they always give you very, very detailed, sharp images. And to put depth in your painting, you have to soften edges. You can't let these distant trees have sharp edges like they do in the photograph. So you have to use your brush, use your finger, use something to sort of smooth them out. I don't like the looks of that little thing there. All right. So we're trying to give some depth. Um, Okay, all right, let's hold off on that for a while. Let's see if we can get some uh, tree trunks. I'm going to go back, instead of using my uh, script liner, I'm going to use one of these small flats, a Trakel <clears throat> number six flat. And I'm going to see if I can get myself some tree trunks. And uh, put me a little bit of liquid white in here. And in this area here, we're going to throw in some tree trunks that are not light enough. <laughs> I want you to be able to see them in here. Something like this. They need to be lighter than that even. They either have to be lighter than the background or darker than the background. So I'm going to make some of these lighter and uh, like this. I'm help. I'm uh, trying to give our give it the uh, the idea that we have trees that are. Uh, back here in the uh, sort of in the distance, but they are still, these are still pretty close to us. Um, see here. As I put these in, I'm putting the trunks so they're 
the trunk doesn't it's not just one of these that goes from bottom to top it's one that has it's broken because so, it actually has uh, has tree and tree limbs over it um, so let's see here there's something there something over here through just enough to make you believe there's a, a lot of tree trunks out there on the other side they can probably be a little darker maybe in here we'll throw in a a dark tree or two and we can come back and refine this we'll get our uh, script liner out and put some light uh, put in some uh, highlights and that sort of thing after a while but just want to sort of lay the groundwork for some of these out here and I got some canvas showing on a get rid of that color of the canvas now I'm not putting in every tree you see in the photograph so when you're painting this um, it's another little tip for you don't try to put in everything that's in the photograph you have to simplify if you don't simplify you'll be really <clears throat> causing the viewer a lot of heartache to try to figure out your painting uh, you have to cut down on the number of trees you have to cut down on the number of tree trunks and uh, the number of rocks in the in the creek I'm just putting some very light light brush strokes back here now to help give us the idea that the the, the woods is going back and back So we know that this is a, a big forest that's got a lot, of, uh, a lot of trees in it and it's hopefully a little even foggy, foggy back there maybe. It wasn't that way in the photograph, but um, usually water coming out of an area like this would at certain times would have uh, fog in it for sure. Whether it really had this time of day or not, I don't know. I put a couple of things back here to sort of indicate what we got going on back there as it's coming this way it's okay doing wet on wet we're going to have to uh, put in uh, some banks back there So let's see here, like this. Whoops, pick up some of that paint. All right, so I'm getting a, a stream that's curving toward us in a zigzag fashion and over here we've got okay as I put in more of this bank over here on the right hand side you'll see the that that stream start to come alive get some violet in there all right more violet And okay, 
I'm adding more atmospheric back there in the back so it looks like it should be a little lighter here in the back lighter here and should be a little darker here I mean, it's very subtle you probably can't quite see it but um, I want this to all gradually get darker as we come forward so that's what I'm working with this small brush this brush is probably a quarter inch it's a flat so it's probably about a quarter inch wide and uh, down here this is some more of the bank on the left side this is even this is all before the waterfall actually we haven't even gotten to the waterfall starts here so I haven't really gotten to the waterfall I'm just sort of getting to the top of it here now so I keep putting in some more maybe rocks and ground and dirt whatever so I'm giving this a little more definition over here on the left side now to uh, help kind of covering up the, the canvas underneath That red, uh, that this orange color really shows through, and it's kind of bringing warmth, the warmth with it. So this is going to be a nice, fairly warm painting, I think. <clears throat> Even though I left that sky kind of, you see that sky almost looks bluish now to me <clears throat> on the monitor. Even though I use no blue, I use violet and midnight black. Um, it just, when you see it with the other colors around it, it sort of fools you into thinking that the sky is really blue. <clears throat> All right, where am I here? Let's see, I want to start putting in some ochres. I see some ochre, yellow ochres in here that are not getting represented in some of this stuff that I've put on so far. These are kind of highlight areas, I guess. Uh, ochre back here in some areas I've got rocks back here there's almost a, there's actually a little <clears throat> if I can look at this photograph really up close there's a, almost a little waterfall back here actually and it kind of comes down and makes a it joins with uh, what's below it and uh, so I think I want to try to put that in while I'm messing around here. In this area here, uh, I've got, I'm going to put in the, uh, some of this water at the bottom here, run it toward us. I'm using some violet with white in it here, just to sort of And with that uh, orange, orange color behind it, it's really, it warms it up. You can actually see, see through these paints. They're a little bit transparent. And uh, so I'm starting to do that. Now let's see if I can use this brush to uh, put in just a, a bit of a waterfall look back there. I'm going to, over that white, I'm going to just use kind of pure uh, ultramarine violet. And like right in here, sort of Okay, so I'm just giving you the hint of some waterfall texture back there. <clears throat> so I have a little waterfall before the big waterfall. And let it be 
like that. Okay. So I'm see I'm getting in there with a small brush. I should stay with a larger brush longer, but I just like kind of the way that's looking back there, and I don't want to leave it. So I'm going to just kind of finish this off, put some more highlights in, some dark shadows, so that you can actually see there's a something going on there. Got some rocks and other things going on here, so I'll come back and put those in, but um, we're here. Now we're getting down to the top of this waterfall here. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Give me some more this yellow color here, this uh, yellow ochre, and put just a little bit in here. It is lighter. There are some tree limbs. Not tree limbs, but it looks like there's some leaves and things kind of floating around in this area. So I'm just kind of put it in and let it change the color a little bit. Okay, so now where does your eye go? Your eye is going like right in there and going right back there. That's what I want to happen. And when I put these logs in front, they're going to take you to the waterfall. It's going to take you in the back. It's going to move you around the painting that way. That's the idea. So hopefully I'm going to be able to direct your eye <clears throat> where I want to. Never know till you get done and you stand back and look at it, but um, just a few little light things here. Okay, getting to the top of this waterfall. <clears throat> I'm going to start putting in some some of my sort of coming forward. I'm going to kind of tie it with this color behind it so that it looks like it's all part of the same water. So I'm going to have water coming over. And if I make this darker, you see if I make this part here darker, my waterfall is going to be coming over in just white, maybe. Um, <clears throat> all right, let's put some more rocky stuff in front of this. Got to get a uh, enough paint to make it work. <clears throat> So I'm using my browns, my Van Dyke, my dark sienna, and putting them. I want it to be darker on this side. Why, you ask? Well, the sun is to my left, and it's got a whole bunch of trees over there. So those trees are shading this part of the waterfall, and as it comes out over here, it starts to get lighter. So I'm going to lighten it up with some some kind of color here that's going to brighter a little bit but this is still going to be darker than the white when I want to put white uh, the white waterfall over it I'm going to be able to just pull down some white stro brush strokes and I'll be able to show you that uh, these um, waterfalls are going to look very nice when I get done with this, I think. I hope. It's my plan anyway. So I'm putting in behind, what's this all goes behind a waterfall. This is the sort of the rocky ledge, I guess, or the rocky part of the waterfall. Put it in here, darker, darker. So I'm just uh, putting sort of an underpainting here that's going to have the waterfall going over it. <clears throat> here, all the way over here, it gets really dark. Over here, I get some more dark browns and blacks. Over here.
How are we doing on time? Wow, 45 minutes. Well, we're we got to get moving here. Hope you guys are stay with me here. All right. Um, I got this area back here that's got a lot of. Uh, canvas showing through so let's put a little more things back here put some more rocks in there start pulling it forward put some lighter colors in here start tying this foreground and the background together I want to have uh, I don't want to just have those green colors at the top and nothing at the bottom here so I'm pulling a few down um, there can be a uh, Those green colors can uh, show up a lot of places here. Okay, I got rocks. All right, over here I've got some really dark areas back in there that I want to show up back in here. This is really in sh shadow back in here in some of these areas. And they're just, it's just shadow of the trees above and that sort of thing. So I don't have to be really explicit to define it. But, and even over further to the right, I've got some uh, really dark areas over here that's sort of closing this in. <clears throat> Close this off so we don't have a lot of dark. I don't want your eye to go off the canvas over here on the right so let's close that in that green looks too bright to me right now I'm gonna tan it down a little bit all right um, we got a lot of canvas to cover yet we got half this canvas to go so all right um, how about this rock over here on the left side this whole area um, it's gonna be a combination of rocks and so I'm going to make them grayish brown, I guess. Start down here. And we'll just start putting in some things that look like rocks. And I'm going to use the uh, my flat. I'm using this flat brush. I haven't used hardly any of the Bob Ross brushes <laughs> yet. Um, use these Trakel brushes. I get started on them. I just love them, so I have trouble giving up using them. All right, we're going to go back and get some more of this gray, brownish gray, and start up here. Now I've made these rocks brighter this is definitely brighter than the uh, <clears throat> photograph right I may want to darken down after a bit by putting in some more dark values but let's just put in the surface covered here very quickly yeah okay <clears throat> and blacks needs to be darker right there in that corner I want this to draw your eye over there too much that's the that's the difficulty when you try to lighten something up like this you uh, draw the eye away from the focal point and uh, that's not what we want to do here um, Instead of making this 
a lot of small rocks over here and I'm trying to make it you know like one big rock face it's got a lot of parts to it so I'm gonna adding some browns in here get some more burnt sienna Let's see I gotta come down to about right here's the bottom of those rocks that jut out here I think that's where I want them yeah stop and step back and look at this for a second <laughs> okay Thanks, Lindy. Yeah, yeah. Those, it's the depth. It's see that depth was missing in the original uh, photograph. So I'm trying to uh, establish some of that in here, and uh, trying to establish a a good set of rocks over here on the left. I'm actually le letting these colors blend and mingle and. Uh, on the left side. Over here, let's see, on the... Uh, I got some... Um, bushes and stuff I can put on top of these to sort of help break it up so it's not doesn't look like one big triangle. No one triangles. <clears throat> So far, that <clears throat> rock is looking like a triangular face. And um, so I'm going to work on that. So by putting on some uh, some greenery, some uh, some of the greenery that's uh, shows in that photograph, um, I can help uh, change the silhouette of this so that it's not just a, uh, a big dark gray or gray rock. All right, let's let that set and marinate for a little bit and see what how it looks. All right, so I'm working on a combination of these rocks on the left and this background behind this waterfall here. Okay. So I've got the place where my waterfall is going to be. I've got the big rock on the left side. Um, this uh, See, I want to make define those rocks a little better. I kind of got them. Okay. So I'm using <clears throat> dark sienna here, just trying to pull in some more rock faces. Leave a little bit of a highlight out there. I may come back and put a highlight on that in a minute, but right now I'm just going to leave it that way and come back and if I can put in some other rock looking things here I'm going to get through with this if I can so I don't have to keep messing with it put some base on this down here that's gonna let me put the water underneath it there we go something like that these things that get down in the water like this, they get very, get very dark. I 
and it's got layers, a couple layers of rocks here that kind of go out and jet out into the this stream that's being formed. Something like that. <clears throat> now what am I doing there folks? I'm making a clone. You see the clone? Two little fingers sticking out. <clears throat> Try not to do that. Don't make them look identical. If you can keep from it. Um, this is really the bottom of a of a shelf like so I'm gonna put some more top of it highlight it <clears throat> like that so I don't have that uh, quite the clone look that I was developing there by by mistake um, these others this other one has a little bit of a light brown on top of him so something like that these are there's like rocky little shelves that you can kind of walk on and go out here in the water and watch the falls come by. Something like that. Up here I've got a few things I want to pull down to make some differentiation in those rocks there and kind of tie it in. All right, I'm spending way too much time on these rocks. Um, but I may come back and touch those up after a bit. Well, I am going to put some <clears throat> foliage over it, so uh, I'll do that in a second here. Fill in. I see some canvas coming through. I'm trying to cover up that canvas as much as possible there. All right. Um, that's that. That's that. Okay. Over here, I've got some similar type rocks going on over here. They come down on this. Over here, we got a bunch of rocks laying in here. We got a change it up, put some and um, what I'm doing over here is okay so these are a lot of rocks and stuff in here there's even more waterfalls in here if I can highlight them I'm going to put some of this dark <clears throat> color I've got going on here we'll use this to make some of these rocks make some more waterfall action going on here okay something like that all right so that's the place where a lot of my water is going to be and a lot of my uh, some more of my uh, waterfalls let's see I'm going to put um, a couple in here I might just put I'm going to put this dark in right now and just come back and hit it with my water over that in a second okay all right, so much for that. I've used this big brush. And let's <clears throat> see if we can... One of the things I want to do here in the foreground is I want to put in this, this water here. And I want to, I'm going to put some liquid white in because I want to use the properties of this white on white, or uh, wet on wet here to get the, the paint to flow the way I want it to. So I'm using liquid white now, right in this area. And uh, and I can actually put that liquid white even up above if I want, but I'm gonna try to use it here and uh, What this will let me do is pull the dark colors down and uh, and it'll help me make that uh, 
type of soft water thing that I want going on there. Let's see, I'm going to try to stay between these logs. All right, so that's that. Um, I'm going to have some more of that up here. I think I'm going to maybe even throw a little bit in here. It's going to help the, the water run. Okay, so that covers a lot of canvas in a hurry. We just use that liquid white. It just goes everywhere. Now, <clears throat> how are we going to make a waterfall? Well, typically I would use the old uh, fan brush here to kind of come over this way. And we'll see if I can get it to flow. I'm going to put just a little liquid white with my titanium white. <clears throat> see if we can get this just a little bit looser, a little bit uh, runnier texture, I guess. So up here we've got this something like that. But every time I do it, I pick up the uh, paint that's on the canvas. So you gotta, when you do this, you gotta just about clean your brush every time. So let's come back and. Now by changing the angle, you see what I did there? I went from, from right to left, left to right, left to right, right to left. Um, I'm putting in these very soft brush strokes. I'm cleaning out whatever's in my brush. I'm using more liquid white. Um, Okay, I don't want it to be cover everything. I don't want it to be solid. I want it to be loose. And I want it to, when it hits down here, I want it to splash. So I'm, st I'm stippling now with this fan brush. These fan brushes are great for this kind of thing. And we're gonna have it come over more rocks over here. Gonna stipple in some more here, and uh, and it's gonna come over this way. See, so we're getting a very nice looking. Your daughter, Lindy, says your rock looks like a dinosaur coming down to drink the water. Well, maybe that's what it is. This may be a prehistoric painting. I have to change that so I don't leave a dinosaur there. Okay, so we got this. All right. Making progress here. Um, area I want this to be so I just want it to be churning I want you to see some dark coming through there which I I can see yeah it's going to be Coming back in this way a little bit with the uh, okay. I don't want to overdo it. I got to be careful. I don't overplay this. Just want to make sure I get as much of the canvas covered as I can get covered. So let's. 
stipple in some more turbulence here back this way all right so now we're getting all right I don't think I want to do too much more to that um, I see a couple of areas that could use just a little covering of the canvas so I'm gonna do that right here all right <clears throat> so that's how you put on the waterfall folks that's how you just make it kind of tie together here all right this area here now what's going to happen well we're going to have all these dark dark um, shadows coming down because <clears throat> that water is not going to be blue it's going to be almost muddy looking I don't know what color I'm going to make out of this, but I'm going to get a get some uh, yellow ochre and dark sienna. Pick up a little black and put in there. See what I can get out of this here. I want it to reflect what's above it. You've probably heard me say that before, that water really has no color. It only reflects what's above it, what's around it, what's in it, or what's under it. So, by putting this liquid white on here, I'm allowing myself this ability to make this, these Um, shadows or reflections rather come down and I got the white underneath it so I'm picking up a little bit of that which is kind of reflection of the uh, some of the some of the waterfall itself put just a little dark through here and I'm going to come back and put some white over that <clears throat> and some yellow. So I'm painting around these these logs over here because I'm going to put in a couple of gray logs. Just don't want to lose track of where they are. Does that look like reflection of this waterfall? I have to. Uh, I want to put some uh, titanium white reflection in here around this area. By pulling down vertically, you're getting this, this type of reflection, which is what I like. Take some white and some cad yellow, maybe with a little ochre in it to sort of make it so it's not quite so bright. I'll put in some of these reflections of those trees in the background. Okay. Now, <clears throat> to make this look more like a reflective reflection of water, um, we typically take our big blender brush and we start making long swoops across here, like that. One swoop, clean it out, take another swoop, like that. See how much nicer and softer that looks? Probably not dark enough. It's certainly not as dark as the color in the photograph. <laughs> but I, <clears throat> I can always come back and put more. Since I got that under that uh, white in there, um, liquid white, we should say. <clears throat> I 
I can come back and put more layers on and I can still use it and pull it down. Um, let's put in this log here. Let me get this. I'm going to get my white and black. Get myself a gray color. It's going to stand out a little bit from this. This is not in the photograph at all, folks. I'm just putting in a, a gray log that's sort of laying in the water and uh, got some shadows under him here like this got another one over here that's got some kind of laying in the water again um, change his color a little bit instead of making him a bit brown here Okay, the other thing that I can show you, I think, if you all want to stay with me for a little while, I got, I got some more details I can finish up in here, but um, there's a, another tip that I can give you about putting rocks underwater. And I think I'm going to put a couple rocks under here just to see if I can show it to you. All right, so I'm trying to make that as look like it's in the water as much as possible. Before I get out of there, I'm going to get my uh, um, script liner. I'm going to put a few branches on here to make it look like we've got some. That really is a log, so you know that what that is. It's not just a. Something like that, maybe a little darker here. Okay, and this other one's going to have a few things sticking out in him as well. This, make sure I've got this shadow coming and just sort of fading into the water. I want it to look fairly strong and then fade into the water. It's kind of out of the water here at the top, at the bottom of the painting I should say. And when you get up here it sort of just fades into the water, blends with, because it's kind of laying down in the water. <clears throat> right? Okay, so that tells you what those are. I could put a few more things on there if I wanted, but I don't want to keep messing around with this. Uh, when you put rocks underwater, they tend to take on a sort of an ochre type color. And I'm going to see if I can put a few here and blend them so that you can see, you think they're rocks back in here somewhere. I'm using my script liner and just some pure yellow ochre. And you put them in, a little highlight on top, and then you put a little bit of a darker shadow around the bottom. And it's not quite dark enough. Like that. Didn't get quite. I'm going to make this next one a little more very specific here, like right in here. They they tend to take on an ochre appearance if there's water over them. This actually could be a log laying under there, maybe you know. And the ochre helps, kind of shows the, it's almost like a log under the water here. So rocks, yellow ochre, can't even see that on the 
monitor, I don't think. I, I can't see it on the monitor, so I'm going to lighten that up a little bit. Um, but it's that shadow underneath, the yellow ochre on top. Like that. See how that shadow, that dark, makes the light show? Like that. It could be anything. It could be a rock. It could be on top of the water. It could be under the water. But because you use that yellow ochre, um, it looks like it's under the water. And if I use my brush here and give it just a, a very light touch, it will help sink it down into that into the water more. I don't want it to be too standoutish, too much, too stand out too much. Okay, folks, um, let me see. I'm going to do a few more things with my, how long we've been going? Hour and 17. Okay. Um, I'm going to do a few more things with my <coughs> script liner here. Get some more. Uh, I want these to look like they're trees that got some something going on. I'm going to put in a few. Um, branches and that sort of stuff up here. Put in a few. things and put in some put in a few um, branches no I'm not sure I'm liking that that well um, over here let's put in a Let's put in a few things that look like there's some things going off of these trees so they're not just standing out there by themselves. Very light. pick up some of this lighter color see if I can put a few more light things in here to brighten it up a little bit just something to add some interest okay something like that let's put a few highlights maybe here put some of this uh, lighter color on here highlight a few of these things with some All right, um, the only thing left is this big old rock on the left. I think I want to try to do something more with him. <clears throat> Get me a, another brush. Um, I'm going to try, see if I can take the dinosaur out of it <laughs> for Lindy, Lindy's daughter. I may make it worse. If I could get some dark shadows in here. Get me some angular marks here that make this typically angular marks help say rock. I've got a bunch of horizontal marks that don't really say rock necessarily. 
doing these word on word is kind of kind of difficult, but I shouldn't complain. Just want to make some uh, differentiation between some of these layers. Can make them kind of dark where they either dark at the bottom above uh, like this or dark on top and then fade them out below. Yeah, that's a little maybe a little better. I don't know. You can work on that when you do your painting. Um, thing I wanted to put on there was some of these tree branches, some of these. Uh, um, not tree branches. Um, I want to put in some uh, bushes here and I'm going to use my ochre and white and sap green in my fan brush. See if I can get a lighter color here that sort of lets me pop in some trees like this, using this fan brush to the side and just stippling in some greenery on there. Maybe that'll keep it from looking like a, a monster, maybe. There. Do the same thing in another spot or two up here, maybe along this. I think this is sort of like ivy or something growing. Wow, got a lot of ochre in this one. That's all right. Okay, come back, get some sap green and put a little bit darker in the bottom. So that helps kind of disguise this as a, uh, a big rock. It just shows you it's a rock surface. Um, like that. A lot of foliage growing around there. All right. Um, put a few of those come out over this waterfall. So it looks like we've got. All right. I think that's looking a little better. Um, how about just a couple of those on the other side? There is some same kind of thing going on on the right side. Um, over here in this area, throw a few things. They might be getting some some uh, sun over here, like this. And uh, make them brighter, make them greener maybe. So this is just fan brush work, tapping the sides. Put in a few things up here to kind of break this up a little bit so it's not quite monotonous as it was. Highlights. Yeah, so see that helps bring in some of the other another layer of another value and that's I'm making it sort of light and I'm kind of covering up some of these tree trunks that are kind of sitting there look like they didn't belong anywhere so something like this maybe a few greens in here all right tell me when to stop I think it's time All right, I've got a mixture of lights and darks and that mid values here. Just kind of trying to make it kind of pull together so that we have a, a good mixture of values. And these trees should have <clears throat> more foliage on them over here showing because they are closer. Okay, folks, I think almost an hour and a half. Um, 
I really, really appreciate you staying with me. Yeah, this fan brush is pretty amazing, Lindy. I, uh, you, you see Bob Ross use that thing, and it's like just amazing what you can do with it. And uh, so I'm having some fun with it too. Uh, I'm going to give myself a little room here to put a signature on this. And uh, call this one done. Better get more than that. Uh, See, it's got to be lighter or darker. I'm gonna make it darker. You can't see it. You can't see it. Maybe that's a good thing. And it went light. It wasn't the greatest place to put my signature, I guess. More light, light, light. There we go. Now you can see it a little better. Take 10 minutes to sign my name. All right. <clears throat> I didn't even show it to you there, did I? <laughs> All right, so much for that. Okay, so the rock looks more like a rock and less like a dinosaur, that's good. Um, I've got some nice, uh, whoops, let me put this, uh, on, move it back over here. All right, folks. Um, so you can see the, the things I did with this painting was I made it, gave it more depth by taking out a lot of those trees in the middle, <clears throat> giving it some lighter values back there. I, I uh, changed the left side so this is more of a rock than just more grass. Um, put in a couple of lead-ins to point you toward the, fo the focal point by putting these uh, logs in the, in the water and then even put in some rocks under the water. So uh, those are all kind of some nice tips you can use when you paint oil paintings and uh, I think I'm going to stop with that and zoom back and say hey, thank you again for watching thanks for being here I'm uh, glad to have you all tune in to my channel and uh, uh, if you're planning to watch me paint watercolors next week I will not be doing it I'm going to be on a little out of the studio for a few days so I won't be able to do a live uh, watercolor broadcast but I will try to get a watercolor done before the end of the month if possible um, and I'll, I'll post it as soon as I get it done. So uh, anyway, uh, thanks for tuning in today. And uh, check out my Facebook page. The, the uh, sketch and the references are out there. On, not on my Facebook page, they're on my website. Check out my website. Check out my Facebook page. Uh, if you want to support me, i got a Patreon uh, channel that you can uh, give me a, a, some, uh, some encouragement by just supporting me. Uh, you know, these things... Uh, I love to do this, but it does take time and take some money to buy the materials and stuff. So uh, if you'd like to support me, go out to Patreon and look me up and uh, you can uh, give me some uh, support there. Um, with that said, I think uh, that's all I want to say for now. So until I see you again, this is Larry Hamilton saying so long for now. Bye-bye.